Well, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to today's brand new video in which I want to share with you my top 5 most awaited new perfumes that are going to be released in the early 2020. Also, feel free to comment down below those perfumes that you are excited the most to try this year because there have been quite a few interesting announcements for new perfume launches from niche indie and designer brands and these top five perfumes definitely put me into excitement. I can't wait to try them out. I have high hopes for them and if you are lucky enough to have already had a chance to smell some of these, feel free to share your feedback with me on them in the comments down below. I will really appreciate that and if you enjoy watching this video, please like it in the end, give it a huge thumbs up up and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Follow me on my social media, all the links are going to be down below. And if you want to find out more about these top 5 perfumes that I'm ready to blind buy, then please keep on watching. So the first one that uh, is so exciting to me and the moment I saw it, I fell in love with it and not even because it's from one of my favorite brands, not because I love the notes, but because I love the bottle. And I'm definitely that person that cares most about the inside than the outside of uh, the bottle. But Rose Prick by Tom Ford is absolutely incredible incredible in the dusky pale pink matte flacon. It's breathtaking. I love how it looks and in my opinion they took a risk to release a new perfume in a such a girly looking bottle because a lot of their customers are men. So let me know those Tom Ford lover men out of you who is ready to buy such a feminine bottle. And this perfume is obviously about the rose and the rose accord promises to be good because it uh, is created out of different rose materials. Rose from uh, Turkey, a rose from Bulgaria and also the May rose. So I want that rose to be full bodied in the opening. We should have some spices in the dry down. We should have sweet patchouli and I hope this is not gonna be a typical patchouli rose. I hope they will give us a new type of a rose scent and I'm really into roses. It is very hard to mess up a rose perfume for me personally. So yeah, I am very, very excited for this one. It is pricey. I don't own any of Tom Ford's perfumes, but I'm ready to blind buy this one. And if you have already smelled it, please let me know how it smells. And in my opinion, it looks even cooler than their Lost Cherry. And of course, Rose Freak, the name is on point. Let me know what do you think about this uh, new provocation from Tom Ford. Uh, you know, like each brand stands for something and Tom Ford is like provocation and stuff. So yeah, I'm very excited for Rose Freak. And uh, if we don't get it in Germany, I will blind buy it. But with that being said, let's move on to the second one which is uh, a new perfume from Jo Malone and this is a new addition to their Intense Cologne range and this time this perfume is going to be about vetiver and uh, vanilla. So, vetiver and golden vanilla as the perfume is called uh, sounds very promising to me personally. First of all, I like Jo Malone as a brand. I love their layering concept and I love their Intense range because uh, it's... Um, more complex than the lighter range and I have seen only one review on this perfume from such a lovely lady. I believe she is in England because she sounds British and not that well at uh, recognizing different accents but uh, she doesn't sound American to me and uh, she was a fan of this perfume and um, I have been dreaming about vanilla perfume from Jamalon. Every time I went to Jamalon's counter, I told girls who work there that I want Jamalon to release a intense perfume about uh, vanilla and probably brands are listening to me or like the universe. So I should keep on dreaming about perfumes because I get what I want. And uh, this is going to be quite a contrasting scent in my personal opinion because I'm not uh, the biggest fan of vetiver. It is definitely a masculine note for me. I don't have a wearable vetiver so I hope this one is going to be my type of vetiver because there is vanilla. Vanilla is my favorite note. It's definitely in the top five uh, of my favorite notes and there is also something green in that perfume, something spicy. So I hope it's going to be good and I can't wait to go to Frankfurt and smell it. But uh, I think it is already available in Great Britain. So if you are from there, check it out and let me know what you think about it. And let's move on to the next one. 
which is from private Christian Dior's collection and uh, it is called Rouge Trafalgar. I really like this name. I think they have something Trafalgar or Trafalgar, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, in their makeup uh, collection and um, for some strange reason I have never been the biggest fan of their private collection. In my opinion it is overpriced, the packaging is very simple, especially for that price. There are more interesting private collections from designer brands out there but for some strange reason I'm really into the sound of this perfume which should be very fruity, cherry, musky. I don't think it is going to be something new and groundbreaking like none of them are but I have thought on all of them. Maybe you want uh, to hear them, let me know that. And of course, if you have smelled this perfume, let me know if this is something that is worth testing, but I will definitely test it anyway as soon as we get it. The next perfume is the newest flanker of uh, legendary Lancome's Tresor and it is called La Nuit Tresor Nude. And here's the deal, I am very excited for it because the packaging is very beautiful, but that's not the main point why I want to get it, like uh, with rose spray, because definitely the bottle is um, the main reason why I want to get that perfume. With this one, I have a um, different reason, because last um, year they created a new flanker of Trezor perfume that is great, but I don't really care about it, and that was Musk Diamond, uh, this bad boy right here, that blew me away because it smells like your skin, but better, sweeter, more sensuous, and I just love it so much, and this bottle is so pretty, and the newest flanker looks even better, and I like the notes, but I can't even imagine how it will smell, because there are no designer perfumes with uh, notes spray down quite like it. So we have bergamot, rose and in the dry down coconut and vanilla and that sounds pretty simple but I have such high hopes for this rosy perfume. I want it to be powdery, I want it to be vanillic, I want it to be great. I am so excited for it, maybe we'll get it really soon so let me know if you want me to review it and uh, I really, really want to get it because I have a feeling that it's going to be my type of a thing. All right, and the last but not least one, actually this is going to be my first purchase, is called Biva and this is from the Indian American Perfume House DSH Perfumes, which is my number one perfume brand. And Biva was created and dedicated to Robert Herman, who passed away in the late 2019 and he worked for South of Long, very famous perfume magazine and um, he had that image for perfume that would be inspired by Japanese freshwater Biva pearls and he wanted Don Spencer Hurwitz to create that perfume and in my opinion it is so kind of Don to create that fragrance that was the last wish of um, a perfume enthusiast uh, that she was close with and she's very comfortable with uh, Japanese and just Asian perfumes and as you might know Japanese and uh, just Asian fragrances in general are very different from modern Western perfumery. So this one should be about aldehydes, rice powder, mint and jasmine and it's right up my alley. All of my blind bots, well like uh, the majority of my blind bots are from DSH, I don't regret any of them. This one I'll get as soon as I get my salary and I'm so excited for it and uh, it was created for a good cause and I'm just so so proud of Dawn that she did that. Uh, as you might know I'm dreaming of collaborating with her and creating a perfume. She creates most um, touchable perfumes for me and um, yeah guys I'm excited for it and um, stay tuned for my updated thoughts. And with that being said, that completes this video. So let me know if you are excited to try some of these too. What do you think about them? I think 2020 is going to be a good year because 2019 really impressed me and I hope um, I won't be disappointed by new releases in 2020. But of course there are hits and misses and probably some of these are also won't work out for me. But I have high hopes for them and uh, if all of them work out for me then I would be really happy. So if you enjoyed watching this video make sure to like it because I'm excited about your thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what do you want to see from me next. I am looking forward to chat with you and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the description box and uh, stay tuned. Smell good. We'll see each other in my next one really soon. So, bye guys!